Hello, 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 my beautiful friends from the internet. How are you all doing today? I know you guys can't answer that question to me directly on this platform, whatever you are listening on right now. However, I would like to hear that answer in your head. And I would like you for you to uh, manifest and tell me that information on a metaphysical level. I want you to, um, what is it called? Uh, use your inner human telepathy the f- and, and, and have it underlied by the fact that you are a part of everything that exists and everything that exists is inherently, fundamentally a part of you. And use that to tell me how you are doing today and I will receive and be receptive to that universal and cosmic message. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Reddit Asks Us podcast and before we head into the podcast, I'm your host Luke Dick Um, and if you're listening on on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, maybe Pandora, then make sure to leave us a rating and also please Leave us a review. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Reddit Asks Us Podcast, where new clips will be posted in the future at some point in time when I start posting clips on there again. I had that kind of cool idea with the whole typing out letter thing. I don't know. I liked it, but uh, I like it. It's not that I like don't like it anymore, but uh, I do like it. Anyways, so just a couple of administrative things before we head into today's juicy, lovely wonderful and full of rich content episode. I was sick last week, as you could all hear probably through that last episode. It was unpleasant. It was as funny because I'm glad I recorded that on that Tuesday because that next and that night and that next Wednesday were unbearable. I was having, I had chills all day, guys. It was, it sucked. I was just coughing and just, constant uh phlegm it's not good i was not vibing it was not the vibe but um i am mostly past that now i think this is probably the week that i'll give you guys your second episode so i'll probably put out another episode on thursday just to make up for that kind of short episode um and you know I'm, I don't want to commit to this right away, but I've been toying with the idea of maybe putting out another episode on Thursday. So doing a double E show, doing a bi-weekly show uh, where we put episodes on Tuesday and Thursday, just because I realized that this type of content is really easy to consume. And um, it's not really hard for me to make. It just depends on what the posts on Reddit are like. Some are, some weeks is, the, you know, you maybe you wouldn't be surprised because I guess you guys are, if you guys do use Reddit, but Man, you just see this, especially on Ask Reddit, it's like one of the most uh, joined or followed or subbed uh, subreddits. Man, you just see the same posts over and over and over again. Like, it's it's just like, what? Like, don't people get tired of answering these stupid questions? Like, some, and they're so, some of them are so generic and just dumb. They're dumb questions. Like, if you had $1 million at this exact moment, what are the first 10 things you would buy? Or first, first like, what is the first thing you buy? Like, you ask that, okay, that can be an interesting question. But if you ask it every single week, it gets repetitive, man. And it gets, it's, just, it's just not it. It's not the vibe. Anyways, I don't want to take up too much time, but I'm back. I'm super excited to be with y'all today for this episode of the Reddit Asks Us podcast. Welcome to any new listeners who are tuning into the show, maybe for the first time or maybe the first couple times. I am happy to have you here, and let's get right into the content. So today's episode, this was the top post of the week for this week from uh, from May, whatever it is, April, because it's May, it's, it'll be May 3rd, so from Tuesday, April 26th to May 3rd, uh, Tuesday, May 3rd, so uh, this week's episode is the top post of the week. What is the biggest scam in life that no one wants to admit? And I don't necessarily if, if this is going to be that no one wants to admit. I just think that these are some of the biggest scams in life. I saw some a couple of them and people had some interesting things to say. So let's hop right in, folks. So let's pedal to the metal. Let's have that was super. That was kind of metal. Ah, let's go. 
Um, anyways, I'm going to stop rambling. It's been five minutes of listening to me rambling, so I'm sure you guys don't want to do that. Anyways, so yes, as I said, what is the biggest scam no one wants to admit? So the first post comes from Mr. Bob Ferguson. And I agree with this. And I'm sorry, you guys, I will be sharing some of my opinions during the show. Uh, We work the majority of our lives during our fittest years of health for the promise of a golden retirement. We will probably be too old and ill to enjoy it properly. We will reply from word serious. First, you have strength and time, but no money. Then you have strength and money, but no time. Finally, you have money and time, but no strength. That is just powerful, guys. These are some powerful comments. We got a, another reply here from Ice Maverick 85 I saw this exact thing happen to my dad. He worked his ass off for his entire life, got hurt on the job, and was forced to retire. But he at least did get a nice settlement from the injury, but then immediately discovered that he had cancer and died in a few weeks after surgery to remove the cancer due to a blood clot that doctors never spotted. He was never he never got to enjoy any of the things he always wanted to do during his retirement. And see, guys, there's a couple of posts like this. But I it's I think we are let me just collect my thoughts here for a moment. We are conditioned into a social way of life. And our social way of life is like 90% to 80 to 90% of what we do with our time is constructed by our social and structural societal environment um, that is uh, confounded and and created and constructed based upon uh, social norms and societal norms that have been created over time. And so when you're born into something, it is very difficult to take a step outside of that. And this is why I love history, because history gives me a chance to look back and say, and give give me a chance to step outside my own time and understand maybe what it was like for people who lived at a different time and what their conditions were. Because I think it's important to understand the conditions of when you are living and why those conditions are there. Because because honestly, the, the conditions of where, of, of, uh, society or and of these of the uh, environment that you live in will determine uh, ultimately you know a lot about your life you know the paths that you can take um, the certain circumstances that you may find yourself uh, in and and uh, subject to based on the environment that you live in so understanding the the uh, structure of and the environment in which you live is very important to reflect on that and ask yourself because oftentimes we once we do start to question these things because my point is is that we take a lot of 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 uh, our regular life for granted right and we might not notice the subtle ways that we are being mistreated or or things that we accept as part of our lives when in reality uh these are actually very negative things that are happening to us and things that as human beings, we kind of question and say, I don't really deserve to be treated like this. I don't really deserve to be talked like that. I feel like I'm doing this and I'm not seeing this. I feel like others around me are also having this experience and I feel like there is something missing. There is there is a level of unsatisf- undissatisfactoriness that is uh, that I'm being subject to, that it feels unfair. It feels that there is an alternative. Um, or there could be an alternative, but we are not being treated and and uh, are not subject to this alternative. And a lot of this has to do with our working life. And that's mainly what I'm getting at is that we kind of take the fact that you have to work in this life uh, and doing a job uh, for is something that we are just supposed to accept. This is something that we are supposed to accept as a function of our of our given reality. And what I want everybody to know is that you cannot put a price on consciousness. You cannot put a price on life itself. Life itself is inherently priceless. It is it is a uh, it is above value. It is it transcends value 
because life is inherently, especially to a person and a conscious being, life is the most important thing and the most valuable thing that a person can have or, I guess, possess uh, to a certain extent, whether that's actually possible. So to put a monetary price on something like this, especially something that is socially constructed, something like money and, and, and value in terms of monetary value, to put that on somebody's life and to put a price on your time of your life, because let's be real, your life is time. You have a finite, scarce amount of limited time. And what our society says at this point in time and a lot of, and I'm sure a lot of Redditors might understand where I'm coming from, and I'm, I'm going on a bit of a rant here today, um, is that uh, we, are, we are selling our consciousness to, you know, corporations. And I just don't, part of me just doesn't think that that is right, that we have to sell our inherent given conscious being and existence uh, in order to survive in the world, especially when... It seems like there's a huge work. Oops, my guy, my bad guys. Under, I actually plug, unplug my headphones. There's a huge, uh, the great. Uh, it's being called the group, the big quit, um, and the the great quit is that a lot of people are quitting their jobs right now. The rise of the anti-work subreddit, and that is because people are beginning to realize that they are being treated unfairly, and that life doesn't need or have to be lived in this particular circumstance. And all I'm really saying here is I just, I want everyone to be able to have some dignity to appreciate their own lives because your life is inherently unique and special to a point that cannot be replicated. There is no replication of a given human being. It is just not, it, I guess it's not possible as of right now. Maybe in the future you can replicate somebody. But even still, those from the moment that you are replicated, those are two different people. And uh, because now they are living separate lives and having separate experiences uh, and, and taking in separate information. So, you know, I just want you guys to have a little bit more uh, or just conv- and I, I don't really like, you know, I would just I would I would like for my listeners, if you guys do and enjoy this podcast and do listen to the show. I want to I want you guys to just know how inherently valuable your life is. It is literally priceless. You cannot put a price on consciousness and life itself. And I just don't want you guys to feel um that you're mis- being mistreated and there's nothing you can do about it because you can stand up for yourself and stick up for yourself and say that hey, my life means more than this. You know, my conscious experience is above is above, you know, slaving myself away to some corporation in order to live or some some business. And if you like where you work, that's great. That's great. But just remember that life isn't life isn't meant to be about work. You know, life isn't life isn't meant to be easy. You know, we're we're life is meant to have struggle and it's important to have struggle and suffering in our life because it's inherently what we're subjected to as human beings. But that suffering can be lessened, you know, and I think a big part of suffering and stress and anxiety and depression is just this state of the of the world right now and our economic environment that we live in and what we are subject to as human beings. But anyways, enough of this rant, guys. I'm going to move on to the next post. Um, so this one comes from a deleted account. The easy to join, difficult to cancel subscription model. A reply from AC1084. Pioneered by gyms. I canceled mine as soon as lockdown started and I put together a home gym. Literally had to print out something from their website and mail it into them and call them three times. That whole business model is based upon people signing up, not going, and putting off canceling due to a combination of not wanting to admit failure and the whole process of being a pain, being a pain in the ass. If everyone in the gym, if everyone in, uh, with a gym membership went just twice a week, they'd have a real problem on their hands. Um, yeah, and, and the reason I mentioned this too is, uh, is because I, uh, I'm so su- like, I'm subscribed to a v- various little internet things because of the different types of, uh, content stuff that I do. Uh, and, uh, like, yes, it's just, 
it's ridiculous how how difficult it is to quit some of these stupid things like like even when I was because and gyms I understand too because when I was uh leaving uh you know the the province where I'm from to move here to Halifax I had to cancel my gym membership and it was I had to print out something too I had to sign a document like why why does it have to be this way? Can't I just unsubscribe like I'm from a mailing list or something? Can't I just, why does it have to be so difficult to cancel your membership? And you know what? And um, making music and stuff too. Splice. Splice is, so for any of those people who don't know, Splice is this uh, online uh, platform, an app where you can go and find uh, samples so that you can chop them up and do whatever and put them in your music. And man, canceling your splice membership is just, it's unnecessarily like that. And, and, and this, it goes with a lot of these audio type of things. Like if you subscribe to any, uh, places that give you audio, uh, processing features. So different plugins that you can use, um, uh, basically just different effects, uh, that you can, that you can, some subscription services. And I find this is with most subscription services is that they are, uh, they have like separate pages that you go to and it makes them, it makes them feel sketchy. You know what I mean? It makes them for some weird reason. It just makes it like, Oh my God, I got scammed one time, guys. This is a you guys scam story. Um, because I signed up for this cause at the, I, when I was very first new to making music, um, I, I wasn't very good at it. You know, I didn't really know how to mix or master or anything. And, uh, you know, I was, I was new to it. So, when I was, when I first started, this was like, geez, two years ago, maybe three years ago. Um, I wanted to have better sounding mastered and mixed music. So there's this app that you can, or, or this online program that you can, uh, subscribe to and, uh, they will like, master your music just make it louder I guess that's what they kind of wanted to do with it but it was just a total scam like they didn't do anything and I looked it up on that's one of the reasons why I started using reddit actually because I I looked it up on reddit and being like what the fuck is this like I just naively signed up for this and guys I was 18 okay don't don't be too hard on me uh or maybe I was 18 yeah I was 18 um maybe I was even 17 but um but yeah, and I'd signed up for this stupid thing and then I looked up on Reddit and they were like, don't use, like, very difficult to get rid of. It's a scam and all this stuff. And so I was like, I'm like calling my bank. I'm like, cancel this. You have to cancel this. And it was, I think it was before they really got a hold on me and scammed me for a lot of money, but <laughs> I'm sure they would have. But uh, yeah, I, I, I did get scammed by them because they did nothing to my tracks and the service didn't even work. And like when you tried to cancel, that was the thing. And then when you tried to cancel your membership, uh, it was this super roundabout way and it didn't even work. There was like no actual option to cancel it. So I had to call my bank and get them to stop any transactions from this company and my bank uh, taking out money. So <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a scam story, but that just goes with, and, and to then I'll be sketched out with any audio type of stuff. And that's been the case, uh, especially with like Splice and uh, there's another service that I subscribe to that I use for like live streaming and stuff. And and they're just, they're ways of 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 uh their methodology to how you cancel subscriptions is just unnecessarily complicated and it makes it feel sketchy it's like come on guys just make this easy for people um so the next one comes from j uh, shaped nerd the entire wedding industry to be clear not marriage but weddings specifically I'm happily married to my wife and we were content to do something special. Just the two of us maybe spend a couple of grand and treat ourselves and a little bit of something amazing. Uh, cue the family's getting involved and before you know it, we're spending closer to 20 grand on one day and feeding a bunch of people I've not heard of, bo of before or since the wedding. Yeah, that is a huge thing. Weddings can definitely... Uh, become way more expensive and unnecessarily expensive. And you know what? People, I think that there's also this obsession too with like weddings having to be expensive. Like if you want and can afford an expensive wedding, go go for it. But don't expect others to be able to follow that same principle because it's totally unrealistic. And especially for your family members, man. Like my parents, when they got married, even my mom said like we really tried to have like a... a uh, not a cheap wedding, 
but a, like a frugal wedding, like, like, um, something that's like, you know, not super, super, uh, expensive. Oh, not like, you know, not like the trashy weddings I was, you know, talked about a couple episodes ago, but, um, if you guys want, you can go listen to that episode. I think it was two episodes ago. What's the trashiest wedding you've been to? That was a fun episode. But, um, and see, that's a good Reddit question. But, uh, anyways, uh, my parents, yeah, they, like my mom, like even she said that like we were trying to go frugal with our wedding. Like we weren't trying, we didn't want to spend nothing, but we wanted to spend, you know, a couple, like these people said, a couple grand, maybe just, you know, whatever. And it ended up even being more expensive than that. It wasn't, it didn't end up being too, too much because my mom did put her foot down, but, uh, it even did end up being more expensive than that. And it's just, there's always these unca these costs, these unforeseen costs and these family members that want to show up and come. And it's like, I've never even met you. I don't even know you like, and that's why I don't know guys. Uh, if I ever do get married, um, cause I'm, I'm open to the concept of marriage. I, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I feel like I'm still forming my beliefs about this. I, I don't believe in marriage as like a religious institution. Um, but I do understand the symbology of a, of it. Um, I can understand why, why it's like a marriage can be, you know, it doesn't have to be a religious thing. It can be symbolic, um, and represent just a, uh, I guess it's meant to represent a uh, partnership and a commitment to a partner uh, that is supposed to be, it's it's a rite of passage almost as a ritual. It's a ritual, ex- ritual experience as rite of passage into committing your life with someone. And that really doesn't have any religious connotations towards it. It's religious, religions have used it, but um, it's you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a little bit more a deeper of a concept to that, but I think, I don't know, I've had this, I've just, I think I would like to do a very like sort of, I don't know, chill wedding and something that's not going to be hella expensive like this because it's just not important to me, you know, I think the importance is, should be placed on the relationship and people should have a good time, but, uh, the, the importance should be replaced on the relationship. And that's the thing is like, you don't really, do you really need like a giant big ceremony at that point? It's just like, and that's the thing is I don't want to, I think a lot of people take the idea of weddings and, and it uses as an excuse to, to just draw attention to themselves, you know, and not saying that all people do this. And I'm not saying that this is like a common thing. I'm just saying that some people do definitely do this. They use it as an excuse to just, you know, soak in all the attention they have for this day. And it's just like, you know, that's, I feel like that's kind of sad. Like, why do you need the approval of other people and just the attention on yourself like that? I feel like I, I don't want that attention. I want to avoid that type of attention. I want to make sure that, um, I just want people to there to be present for a moment in my life, but it's not that I need any attention for it. I would appreciate that afterwards, everyone else has a good time and they can leave saying, wow, that was a great you know, wedding to go to, that was really fun. Like that is what I would rather have that other people enjoy themselves rather than making the night all about me. But, uh, yeah, weddings and just the cakes and the, the, uh, you know, the dresses, all the dresses and just, you know, my mom went it, my mom and dad rented their wedding, wedding gear. They went to their, rented, (laughs) they rented their wedding. My mom went to her rent. Oh my God, guys, my mom rented her wedding dress and my dad rented his wedding tux. So like, yeah, you don't need, uh, you don't need these, these grandeur things. Um, it's just a way for that industry to make money. I mean, they profit off of, off of weddings. So, you know, don't allow people to upsell you on that shit. Um, next one comes from Shenanigami. And this is another one, uh, uh, the similar one, the subscription based economy, because everything's moving to subscription based things. Right. Um, we reply from, oh my God, some of these usernames, man. Cockmanderkeen. All right. Soon enough, piracy will come back to the norm. With Netflix, they had me from downloading to pay to uh, paying a reasonable price to watch what I want. Then more and more companies jumped on back to where I'm not going to fork over $100 a month for them all. I keep Netflix for being OG plus family members. We'll probably ditch if they crack down. Prime for shipping and Disney Plus for Star Wars and Marvel. Anything on any other platform gets downloaded. Pay a monthly fee for car features. Yeah, that one is dumb. Custom firmware will end up being event- will end up being better eventually. Office 
uh, I pay for for family. Uh, phones, I've moved to buying outright when I lose or break instead of being on a plan. Yeah, this is true. I, I think piracy is coming back. I've heard I've heard this. Uh, this has been on the um, as a lurker on Reddit and uh, and Instagram and just regular YouTube and media and watch whatever. Um, being involved in that social media atmosphere, people are pirating shit again, because uh, especially with the, oh my god, I don't know if you guys have, guys have heard about this, but Netflix is I th- I don't know if this is confirmed. I looked this up and I did see a couple articles about it, but Netflix I don't think has said anything outright. Um, maybe it was just a, a publicity statement to test the waters on how people would react to this, but uh, I can a hundred percent tell you. Before I've told you that people reacted negatively, and so will you. They want to launch a an uh, ad supported uh, uh, tier of Netflix, and I'm assuming that you're probably still gonna have to pay for that. It's probably gonna be like five dollars a month or something. You're probably gonna get pretty crappy quality, but it'll also be ad supported. And it's just like, motherfucker, this is TV. This is cable. Like, what's the difference? Instead of paying for all these cable channels, now you're going to be paying way more money than you were before for cable, or if not the same amount, the same amount, if not more money, to be able to subscribe to all of these different subscription-based services to be able to get, like, and if there's, there's commercials, bro, this is TV, bro, like, that, this is, this is a bunch of bullshit, man, like, the, the, like, well, how are we, rev- how are we, how did we co- go from streaming, and streaming being the next best newest thing, and things are gonna evolve from here, to de-evolving back to basically fucking cable, like, this is just, oh, man, this is ridiculous, folks. This is just enough for me. It's just just ways for companies to make more money. And I think this is a problem, though. And this is, this is what I will give the companies, okay? And this is what I would like to speak with you guys all for one moment. I've been doing a lot of ranting today. I'm really sorry, guys. I had this capitalism shit on my mind, and I've been sick and just got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff on the mind. Um... Especially with just, I'm sure of, of uh, the, my American listeners know that they're, you know, I, I do watch a lot of American, uh, shout out Breaking Points on YouTube. I'm a big Breaking Points fan. Um, but uh, anyways, I'm sure you guys know that your, uh, the corruption within the American political system is becoming more and more evident and more and more obvious as the days pass. And... Uh, that's why that shit has just been on my mind and I've just been watching a lot of YouTube videos about it. So, but, uh, anyways, yeah, I'm just, just frustrating anyways. Uh, and whatever, but anyways, okay. What I will give these, these, uh, companies though, is the fact that when we, (coughs) excuse me, when we were watching cable and movies were being bought on DVD, uh, and, and movies were being sold as physical copies, it was there was a lot more time between when movies would be made and movies would be sold but now streaming is on demand so that time period has shortened which means that production companies for movies and if you're wondering why all these all these TV shows and movies are all shitty now it's because production companies and movie companies can't keep up with the pace of streaming because peep K it takes you two to three hours, anywhere, okay, sorry, let's say it takes you about an hour to three hours to watch a movie, right, it can take anywhere, I think, what, like a series now would, like a, 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 what are they called, a limited series, limited episode series is now anywhere from, you know, I'd say eight to, to, or six to 12 hours, and uh, that's how long it takes you to watch it, but to produce those types of things can take, you know, anywhere from four to, uh, you know, 12, I would even say, nah, 12 is a little bit too much, four, I'd say even 10 months to make that sort of stuff. So they can't produce to keep up with the demand. So things that are being made right now are just being made really crappily and people are wondering why uh, Netflix doesn't have anything new, everything you've already seen. It's like, yeah, because 
it's hard, man, to create content like that. It's really difficult. It's time consuming. And to be able to create good content takes time. All right. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day, as the expression goes. So it's hard to create masterpieces and great and captivating movies. Um, like, like, let me even just say this. I'm, I'm ranting so hard this podcast. I'm so sorry, guys. But let me just say this. If anyone's watched the new Moon Knight uh, on Netflix, I'm sorry, no, on Disney Plus, my bad. Moon Knight on the new Marvel show on Disney Plus. It's a good show, but it's not a great show. Okay, it, it's a it's it's a it's a fine show, but it is not an exceptional show. It is nowhere near the quality of shows like Breaking Bad, um, and some and some of the greatest shows of all time. All right, it is nowhere near that level of. Uh, of captivating and the reason I think is is because they are trying to churn this stuff out very quickly and I think they be, they know that people have loyalty to the comics and loyalty to Marvel as a brand even if it does suck it's not the worst thing in the world um, for them uh, in terms of the storyline being not as captivating or as interesting to watch uh, because they know that people will be loyal to the brand of Marvel and so if you, if you take a show like that, like it's it's good, but it's not great. And that feels like that feels like it's everything today. Um, but yeah, but anyways, that's just a, a little bit of a rant. So I do I want I don't want people to be too hard because, you know, on 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 these companies because companies are taking advantage of the consumers, yes, but it's not the company's fault that content can't be produced quickly enough because this stuff takes time it's hard to write a script and these people are really being pushed so it's so don't be don't be critical of the artists and the artistry and the dedication that goes into creating creating art be more mad at the companies um, for taking advantage of consumers but anyways um, moving on next one comes from puppy cow diamonds reply from uh, andromeda 321 never got this especially since you can now grow diamonds in a lab. Was so excited to get a lab-grown science diamond at our engagement because that is just so much cooler. Plus, no one had to die for my jewelry. Kind of amazing how people will warn the resale value isn't as good for lab-grown as though, or uh, lab-grown though, as if I have plans to sell my engagement ring uh, versus, you know, getting to invest the difference on a down payment for the house now. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, there. Let me, let's put this into perspective, guys. There are entire planets in the universe and in the cosmos that are made of diamonds. Entire planets where the surface of the planet is a diamond. All right, there is a lot of diamonds here on Earth. There's a lot of diamond. It's just the scarcity of the diamond. It's it's the fact that it's not being. Um, it's the fact that, that companies and corporations get to uh, regulate the influx of, uh, of product into the market as to why that increases. And it is difficult to mine, um, and it's, that's why people die doing it. So um, that's what creates the value of the diamonds. But diamonds inherently, in terms of the universal scale, are pretty worthless. Um, but let me tell you this, and this is something I believe I read on Reddit. So shout out to Reddit. Forget diamonds. If you want something truly unique, pearls. Pearls are the way to go. Because diamonds are just rocks. They're carbon. All right? Pearls. Pearls only exist because of life. And life currently is one of the most rarest things that we know exists as of right now in the universe. We don't know of any other living uh, living beings at all in the universe. Nonetheless, they could be able to create something like a pearl, uh, which is created by oysters. I don't actually know how pearls are made specifically, but pearls need life in order to be created. So there is more values with pearls than there are with diamonds. Uh, at least there should be psychologically uh, <laughs> maybe just because, uh, yeah, like you need life and life is rare and life is special in order to create something. But diamonds are just rocks, man. Diamonds are just, that's all they are. They're just carbon, uh, which is very plentiful. 
uh, in the universe, and we are not, uh, we are definitely not, um, oh, they can be grown in a lab, for Pete's sake, like, uh, diamonds are definitely not, uh, a rarity within the universe, let me see if I can read off another post, <coughs> just so that you guys can get your fix of, um, posts, uh, here we go. Let's finish it off with this one. This is a fun one. This is end on a good story, fellas and ladies and fellas. And I don't know. I, I what is the? We need some new nouns and ver and not verbiage or nounage uh, from all my uh, non-binary folks and gender non-affirming folks because I just don't know what to call y'all. I don't. I don't know. Um, but for all of my my wonderful, lovely people out there, uh, my wonderful, lovely humans, and any other uh, sects that you identify. I don't know. Anyways, uh, I hope you all are all happy, and I hope you aren't mad at me. I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying my best. Okay, anyways, because uh, the year is 2022, and we're all trying to do our best. <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's move on. So last one here. I'm so sorry for the ranting today, by the way, guys. Um this one's from this from this one comes from Kilroy was already here claw machines in arcades uh and then we have a reply from Stinda specifically they're programmed to pay out after x number of dollars claw games with cheap stuff like stuffed animals will pay out relatively frequently things like the stacker game or the keyhole games with the big ticket things are programmed to pay out at a much lower rate so then we have another reply here from <coughs> excuse me so sorry you had to listen to that this one comes from Tredon, though. The one, arc, uh, the one in the arcade I worked at in college didn't have that. Instead, you could tweak the claw strength differently during the grab portion versus the carry portion so that people would be able to pick up the prize. This is capitalism, guys. This is what capitalism is inherently and fundamentally. Um, so people would be able to pick up the prize, but then while carrying it to the door, it would drop it fuels that so close feeling and then they give it another go and then they've got the uh parentheses um uh, shoulder shrugging so, uh, emoji so then we have the last thing we'll end it off with here is by uh negatiara 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 all right anyways we had a claw machine at work because we got paid a small percentage for hosting it the guy who ran it was fantastic. He had to set it to a low dollar amount for payout so people would actually be able to win and win regularly. He also refused to tweak the machine with the grab and drop features, so it very rarely grabbed and then dropped before getting into the slot. He also had larger toys, so you could trade in your small toys for a larger one, and he had a fantastic range. Trade in 10, 20 for, super, for a super large toy, trade in 50. We had some guys spend nearly $600 in a week, period, just because they wanted 50 toys to trade in for the unicorn that was so tall, it was taller than my hips. He even bought in uh, he even bought in toy ranges that timed well with the current movie releases. We were a video store, so it worked perfectly for us. We were making bank off the machine, nearly a grand a month. Then he left, and each new person made the machine worse. Payout got higher... They tweaked the settings for more grab and drops, dropped the trade ins entirely. Drop the trade ins entirely. Toy quality decreased uh, with only the occasional fantastic toy line. It didn't matter what we said. Uh, what we said worked for our store because each month was getting worse. Payouts they uh, they tweak the machine even worse to get more money. By the time we asked them to take the machine away, we were making me making thirty dollars a month off of it, enough to cover the electricity bill for it, and not much more. Um, yes, folks, but that is a good wholesome story, and it reminds us that all good things must come eventually to their undoubted and inevitable end. But that doesn't mean that that is a bad thing or a sad thing. That is that means that something great happened. Something that is that is that a, that uh, will persist as a memory and as a cosmic uh, sort of happenstance through time. Uh, and it, it that moment 
should be cherished and and accepted for what it was and that is what makes that moment so great and that's what makes those times so great um i want to end it off to all my beautiful and send off all my beautiful friends from the internet uh, I hope every single one of you is having a blessed, blessed day uh, and have a blessed week and a blessed life. Okay, my friends, I hope to see you next week or this week, later this week. I'm so excited to be back with you. Maybe you'll probably hear some more stories on the next one from Reddit users. This one was a bit ranty, but uh, hey, I can do what I want. Okay, I'm the one in front of the microphone. But who knows, maybe you guys can one day be in front of the microphone. Because like I told you, this is a collective experience. This is a joint venture. I do not exist without you. You do not exist without me. This is a relationship I have with every single one of you. I want to thank you all so much for tuning into the Reddit Asks Us podcast. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, make sure to comment, and also subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, make sure to leave us a rating, and also please leave us a review. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Reddit Asks Us Podcast. I am your, uh, how do you say obliged obliged host mr luke dick signing off peace out